Okay, another early morning trip here, heading out to another presentation. I'm actually in Seattle, Washington at my hotel and heading out to a presentation today at the Car Museum. This is gonna be pretty cool because this is in Tacoma, Washington. So I'm gonna just take you guys along for this ride as well. Okay, Annie, it's great to be inside now and have a little uh, sip of uh, the good stuff after a long day of presentation. Absolutely, and since we're here up in the Northwest, how can you not have a Pinot, excuse me, like a Willamette Valley Pinot Noir? It's absolutely a great drink and there's nothing wrong with having a cold Stella. No, of course, of course not. So let's uh, also talk about something that we spoke at length at the presentation uh -huh. and I think is something that almost everyone would like to um, to know about, and that's case selection. Of course, you know, in our courses we talk about doing endodontic therapy, um, but everyone who comes from a different set of skills and expertise. And how do you think, Anne, general dentists that do endodontic therapy would have to kind of uh, look and decide what kind of cases they do and what they shouldn't do? I think one of the key things for general practitioners doing endodontics is you not only want to do endodontics well, do it within your sphere of expertise, but do it in a profitable manner. So I think the key to doing all of this is proper case selection. And I think one of the greatest things, Ali, for helping out the general dentists, particularly young general dentists, is the case difficulty assessment form produced by the AAE. If you go to aae.org, aae.org, you can get a copy of the case difficulty assessment form. If for some reason you're having problems getting that, just contact Real World Dental and we'll get you a copy. It assigns a number grade to the difficulty of the cases. For instance, if the case is a retreatment case, if the case has a, an acute angle in the apical third, if the case is a difficult patient management, all of these factors which go into contributing to difficulty in terms of a case, this is laid out for you. And I think it's a great guide for the general dentist and it helps them stay out of trouble. Absolutely. I mean, the key is I think where uh, an anonic practice meets success is where everyone does cases that they're comfortable in doing and achieve good success rates and refer cases in which they're not quite as comfortable doing to their endodontist and have a good relationship with their local endodontist and work in terms of teams to achieve what's best for the patient. That, that's why God created endodontists. <laughs> and I think one of the things that I, I said this to my residents and I say it at lectures, you know, um, you can lie to a spouse and I don't recommend that. Um, you can lie to different people, I don't recommend that, but never lie to your attorney and never lie to your specialist because we're there to help you out. And so if you have a situation go where you've separated an instrument or there's been some kind of you know, incident with the patient, whether it's just a misunderstanding or a procedural incident, give a heads up to the endodontist or the specialist that you're referring to. And you know, there's another thing with this case difficulty assessment form that I, I talked about today with the audience and I could see their kind of shock. Maybe not shock, but let's say more surprise. I like the case difficulty assessment form, especially for general practitioners and schools. Because if, unfortunately, if sometime you get involved with litigation and an attorney is asking, how come you as a general practitioner did not send this case to your local uh, specialist, your local endodontist, what you can do is, what you can reply is that, well, I, I filled out the AAE case difficulty assessment form and upon completion of the form, I felt it was fully within my purview to treat the case. That's a very powerful argument legally if you're involved in such a situation. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, ultimately, this form, AAE has helped us kind of triage cases using this list in a very comprehensive way to find out what are the challenges involved doing any given case. Admiral Dendo, the system that we've put together, is a little bit more of an easier system of cutting down the canals from basic to advanced and to the advanced squared based on the level of difficulty of reaching the apex. Of course, reaching the apex could be difficult for many different ways, right. and different reasons. It could be just the mechanical calcification, but it could be the things that are considered in the AE.org 
document, which is a difficult patient, limited opening, yeah, all absolutely. kinds of different things that will prevent you from getting down to the eighth. And you know what you're talking about? You're talking really procedural difficulties. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's kind of a calcified curved canal. I think in terms of patient selection, you have to take a look at the entire picture. Psychological difficulties. Abs uh, absolutely. I, I can give. I can let me let me basically give you an example. I remember years ago. One of my prosthodontic friends came to the office and had an x-ray in his hand and he was sweating, he was diaphoretic. It's never a good thing when your prosthodontic is sweating, prosthodontist is sweating profusely. And it was a case where it was a premolar, he did a beautiful crown and somehow he always missed the apex of the tooth and when he took a final x-ray he realized, oh my gosh, there's an area on this tooth. So what he wanted me to do was he wanted me to do a root canal on this tooth with a minimal access, and it was a silver point case. The problem was this was a really, really difficult patient. But you know, we were able to get through, we were able to take the posts out, able to take out the silver points. We did it all in one visit, which is a good indication for single visit endo, difficult patients. But, but the key thing, and then in terms of that patient, that was a really difficult, difficult patient. And if that wasn't handled by an endodontist, I could really envision that becoming an enormous issue, that yeah. patient. So it's interesting. I mean, the course that we had was an all-day course today. A wonderful group of audience, many people from different levels of expertise from... Uh, all different levels. Exactly. All different levels. But the bottom line is that these types of all-day courses can prepare you to really address basic cases. You're not going to be able to address advanced and, you know, the advanced square types of cases by going to a one-day course that's just the given i mean i teach it you know we teach at the schools that are three-year programs you can't say that you can learn something that takes other people three years yeah. in a weekend so and, and i think the one thing that has separated uh, real world endo right from the inception was that initially it was strictly just an endodontic education course and then we got into product development and things like that but the one thing we have never ever ever made it that a non-endodontist could do all these difficult cases. Again, this is why we have specialists. So for me, when I'm thinking of case selection, yes, of course, the patient interest is paramount, but I'm also thinking in terms of no one needs to have the aggravation of having a case really, really go south and, and be a problem case. Also, it's the profitability. If you're doing a case and it's going to take you six visits, you're not making any money from that case. Send that to an endodontist. They may be able to do that in one visit. You can go back, you can concentrate on the core, the build up the crown. I think this is practicing smart dentistry. Yeah, of course. And at the end of the day, the set of tools and the repertoire of strategies necessary to get it successful in a given case are things that can be acquired. Right. You can go to a formal residency program and attain them over the number of years or you can practice on your own, gaining the information through different uh, venues, such as We Will Dendo, such as many other venues that are out there. But the, ultimately, it's about doing it. And the most responsible way of practicing these types of techniques is not on actual live patients. I know we call it practice, but it shouldn't be that we practice on live patients. Extract the teeth are probably the best and the most responsible way to do cases uh, clinically and hone in your skills and there's, techniques. There's no question that's what people should do. And I think sadly, probably very few people do that, but that's the way that they, you should be practicing that. And I, and I think that there's, there's so many things about case selection. And one of the things to me, it just starts with the entire you know, evaluation of the patient and not just filling up your schedule. You know, It's always a joke in dentistry, and I've been doing this for more than 40 years. Well, it'll just take a few minutes to get that tooth out. And an hour later, the patient's in an ambulance going to a hospital, right? We've all heard horror stories like that happen. I think one of the things in terms of a general practitioner not getting into trouble with a case, I think the AAE case difficulty assessment form is number one. The second thing that I have seen as a former program director was radiology evaluation. There are too many cases, and if you're ever involved with litigation, and you go back and look at cases, the radiology history and the documentation is terrible. Mm. Okay, I've seen cases where people have used lunch low spirals, have driven sealer into the mandibular canal. They had x-rays nowhere near the apex of the tooth. So I think it really is incumbent upon um, all the followers of Real World Dendo, uh, those of you watching this video, when you're doing cases, be smart. Think of the case difficulty assessment form take a good angled radiograph, use whatever other radiographic capabilities you have in the office, whether RVG, cone beam, whatever you want, 
But I think what you have to do is that proper documentation goes a long way in terms of proper case selection. Absolutely. I mean, it's the good old rule of do what, for your patients, what you'd like to have done onto you, if you will. So, you know, with enough expertise and experience, you'll be able to manage more difficult cases. And that's not a problem. Just get the expertise and the training so that you can do it. And do uh, can be very predictable and successful and easy once you understand some of the basic principles. And you know, one of the things we just saw today with, with the course and speaking to people, and when Ali mentioned that we had enormous variation, we had people right out of school all the way up to endodontists. So we had this, we had this huge you know, variation in terms of skill levels. If you do endodontics in a smart fashion, and you do it in a way that's reproducible and predictable, you know what? It actually becomes fun. And if endodontics becomes fun and predictable, it becomes profitable. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's it. Uh, we yeah. just wanted to share with you this experience coming from the beautiful uh, Seattle and Tacoma area and the car museum, which was wonderful. The car museum uh, was uh, fabulous. I've got the Real Dendo car charged up. There's a real one called the Bat Car. It's actually a 1939 Zephyr. And it was, it was really, it was absolutely terrific. Yeah. And you know, when I look at some of these things and, and how we can incorporate things into our practice to make our life easy. You know what my feeling is? Too easy. <laughs> well, for we Rewild Endo, I'm Ali Nissen, I'm joined by Dr. Ann Koch. And uh, as usual, let's save some teeth. Yeah.